Hey everyone, and welcome back to our channel. We truly appreciate all of the support you've shown the channel so far. As per request of one of our subscribers, today we want to make a video which shows you the math behind comparative versus absolute advantage. These terms are used when determining whether individuals or nations should engage in trading and specializing in production of a particular good. This video is going to cover an example which will help you grasp both concepts and teach you how you can calculate who has a comparative advantage. With that said, let's get right into things. So let's start with the basics. Why do countries or individuals trade with one another? Well, put simply to increase their own GDP or to consume products that they cannot make in their own country. Trading can also increase the variety of goods that people can consume. So that's why trading occurs, but how do you know which goods to import and which ones to export? To determine which goods a country should import or export, we look at two things, absolute advantage and comparative advantage. This involves comparing the PPF curves of two countries and seeing who can produce each good more efficiently or with a lower opportunity cost. Now opportunity costs and PPF curves are two topics which we've already reviewed, so if you'd like a recap on either of those topics, I'll link the videos in the description and have them pop up on the screen now. So let's look at an example involving comparative advantage. Suppose there are two people trapped on an island, Albert, who makes clothes, and Olivia, who makes food. However, both Albert and Olivia can make both clothes and food. So, let's look at a table which shows how much of each good they can produce if they were to only produce one good or the other. So as you can see, in the span of 8 hours, Albert can either make 28 units of clothes, or 14 units of food, or any combination in between. In the same span of 8 hours, Olivia can either make 30 units of clothes or 120 units of food, or any combination in between. Right away we can determine who has an absolute advantage in producing each good. You are said to have an absolute advantage if you are more productive than anyone else in making a particular good. Remember, you are said to be more productive than anyone else if you can produce a greater quantity of the good using the same or fewer quantity of resources as someone else. As you can see, when given the same inputs, in this case 8 hours of labor, Olivia can produce more clothes and more food than Albert. So we would say that she has an absolute advantage in the production of each of these goods. But what about comparative advantage? How do we calculate that? You have a comparative advantage if you can produce at a lower opportunity cost than anyone else. Well, how do you calculate opportunity cost? If you need a detailed refresher on opportunity cost, I'll leave a link to our video in the description, but for now, I'll just give you a quick reminder. Opportunity cost is simply what you give up in order to obtain something else. So let's calculate the opportunity cost for Albert and Olivia. For Albert, to get 14 units of food, he must give up 28 units of clothes. Therefore, by dividing both sides by 14, I know that to get one unit of food, he must give up 28 over 14, or two units of clothes. So for Albert, one unit of food has an opportunity cost of two units of clothes. On the other hand, to get 28 units of clothes, he must give up 14 units of food. Therefore, dividing both sides by 28, I know that to get one unit of clothes, he must give up 14 over 28, or one half units of food. And you may notice something. The opportunity costs are actually reciprocals of one another. This will always be true. So once you calculate the opportunity cost in terms of one good, all you have to do is switch the numerator and the denominator to find the opportunity cost of the other. Now let's look at Olivia's opportunity costs. To get 120 units of food, she must give up 30 units of clothes. Therefore, dividing both sides by 120, I know that to get one unit of food, she must give up 30 over 120, or one quarter units of clothes. So for Olivia, one unit of food has an opportunity cost of one quarter units of clothes. On the other hand, to get 30 units of clothes, she must give up 120 units of food. Therefore, dividing both sides by 30, I know that to get one unit of clothes, she must give up 120 over 30, or four units of food. Once again, you will notice that the two opportunity costs are simply reciprocals of one another. Now that we have the opportunity costs of both Albert and Olivia, let's compare them. This table just simplifies the results of our previous calculations. Here we can see that Albert's opportunity cost for one unit of clothes is one half units of food, while Olivia's is four units of food. Alternatively, 
we can see Albert's opportunity cost for one unit of food is two units of clothes and Olivia's is one quarter units of clothes. Let me remind you of our definition for comparative advantage from earlier. You have a comparative advantage if you produce a good at a lower opportunity cost than anyone else. So looking at our table, it's obvious that Albert has a comparative advantage in producing clothes as one half is less than four. Therefore, Olivia has a comparative advantage in producing food as one quarter is less than two. An important point to remember is it is mathematically impossible for someone to have a comparative advantage in both goods. If one person, in this case Albert, has a comparative advantage in producing one good, then the other person, in this case Olivia, must have a comparative advantage in producing the other good. It is possible for no one to have a comparative advantage and this only happens when the two people have the exact same opportunity costs. So there it is folks, I hope that this detailed example has helped you further understand the math behind a comparative advantage. Remember, it is possible for one person to have an absolute advantage in both goods, but not a comparative advantage. As we say every week, remember that our channel is just getting started and that there's lots of content to come. If you like this video and are excited to see more, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and comment what sort of economics topics you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.